The Princess Irene Disaster The Princess Irene was built in 1914, weighed 5,394 tonnes, was 395 feet long and 54 feet wide. She was requisitioned by the Navy on completion and converted into a mine layer. Thursday, May the 27th, 1915. HMS Princess Irene was moored off Shenness at Salt Pan Reach in the River Medway. The previous day, she had taken on mines brought down by barge from Woolwich. The mines were being activated, ready for her third mine laying operation. On board were her crew and officers. Additionally, there were 88 petty officers from Chatham and 76 dockyard workers from Shenness who were strengthening the gun decks. At 12 minutes past 11 in the morning of May the 27th, 1915, there was a catastrophic explosion. HMS Princess Irene blew up without warning. Following the first deafening explosion, a column of orange flame shot up into the sky. This was immediately followed by a second explosion and a second column of flame and smoke rose thousands of feet into the sky. When the smoke cleared, there was nothing left of the Princess Irene. She had been blown to pieces. An officer on another ship said the noise was the most extraordinary experience of his life. The Princess Irene seemed to be hurled into the air a mile high in 10,000 fragments. These fragments fell to earth over tens of square miles. 352 people were killed by the explosion. Only one man who was on the ship survived, although badly burnt. He was blown into the sea with no memory of how he got there. Three crew members who had gone ashore also escaped. Five crew members on a harbour launch alongside the Princess Irene were also killed. The oil fuel depot at Port Victoria was seriously damaged. Wreckage and remains fell to earth many miles away. Several men on ships close by were injured by falling splinters. At Port Victoria, Eva Barden, age nine, playing in her grandfather's garden, was struck by falling wreckage and killed. Half a mile away, a collier had its crane blown off its mountains and a man killed by large chunks of metal. One mile away, on grain, the head of an officer was found. Four miles away, at Raynham, a boot, collar and tie and a pound of butter fell into a garden. 6.7 miles away, at Hartlip, a human head was found. 7.5 miles away, at South End, the pier shuddered and windows broke. Nine miles away at Sittingbourne, houses were shaken and windows broken, the ground trembled and several people were injured by flying debris. Also nine miles away at Breadhurst, debris fell to earth. Ten miles away, the southwest countryside was covered in fallen fragments. Eighteen miles away at Maidstone, the shockwave was felt and the explosion could be clearly heard. Hours later, small fragments of material and paper fluttered down to earth. They waited at the dockyard gate. Wives waited for their husbands, unable to understand what had happened. Unable to believe all were gone. They waited and they hoped, and perhaps they prayed, but no one came home. There was not a street in Chenez unaffected by the disaster, not a street that did not mourn for loved ones. In Granville Road alone, there were 10 husbands who would not be coming home. For most, there were no bodies to bury, no graves on which to lay flowers. Several local men were buried at Halfway Cemetery. Those unidentified were buried in the Naval Burial Ground at Gillingham. Most were never found. All are remembered on the Shenes War Memorial. Following the tragedy, a board of inquiry was set up to investigate the cause of the fatal explosion.
It concluded the ship exploded through some unidentified cause. A verdict of accidental explosion ended the inquiry. Documents made public 50 years later showed the Admiralty was fully aware that the detonators being used were dangerous and a new type was being developed. The documents drew attention to serious problems with the way the mines were being primed, highlighting untrained personnel and hurried procedures. 76 dockyard workers from Chenez were lost on the Princess Irene, one of the Royal Navy's worst naval disasters.